All right, folks, here's your quick and easy InDesign starter course. This will be uh, hopefully pretty fast. So the first thing you want to do, obviously, is open InDesign. So you can use your little magnifying glass down at the bottom or your little Windows, uh, your little Windows icon there and type in I-N-D-E, there it is, InDesign, open that, hello, Hobbit, or whatever that thing is, uh, we're going to create a, a new file here in the InDesign, and we're going to make it a bit of a different size, we're going to design a, uh, a contrast poster here, in this assignment uh, I'm going to change my units here to inches we usually measure documents in inches and you want to make it 11 inches by 17 you can choose whether that is portrait or landscape that's completely up to you do you want your paper to be the wide way or the tall way hey you decide uh, InDesign is often used for multi-page documents you only need one here so you don't need to worry about anything other than one and you don't need to change any of this other stuff. All you need to do is click Create. And look, there's my document. How cool. Now, the first thing you always want to do when you start is you uh, want to save it right away. So I'm going to go to File and Save As. And, uh, well, you want to make sure that OneDrive is running on your computer. Have you checked that today? I'll quickly go down here and type in 1D open OneDrive. Hey, look, I know it's running now. No problem. So I'm going to put it in my OneDrive. If you have a graphic tech folder, hey, good for you. Put it in there. Okay. I've already got one here, so I'm just going to save over that one. Yes, I'll replace it. So now I've got it saved. The next thing I would like you to take a look at is the workspace that you're using. So uh, InDesign usually opens and it looks like this, which is pretty limited for me. It doesn't show a lot of the things that I always like to see. So I usually change this workspace up here. So I encourage you to do this. If you want your page to look like mine, go to up here to this workspace. Yours probably says essentials and put it on essentials classic. That's my favorite. It's a classic. Now, I think I made a change here. I'll just reset mine. Yeah, I made a little change there. So one more thing that I definitely want to have, I want to see, is under window, any panels that you can't see, you can always get them from there. The most important one, I think, is properties. And why that's not there, I don't know. But I'm just going to click that, and properties will show up right there where I want it. So that's super important. So now my screen should look like yours and uh, we should be good to go. Now you'll notice that a lot of the tools on the side here will probably look familiar from uh, Photoshop and Illustrator and a lot of them work very similarly. Uh, the one though that is new here that is perhaps the most important other than the selection tool is this one right here, the rectangle frame tool. And actually there's more if you want an ellipse frame or a polygon frame, you can do that too. So basically every time you wanna put an image or a shape or something on your page, well, I guess not a shape, but anytime you wanna insert something onto your page and you can insert pictures that you download, you can insert Photoshop files, you can insert Illustrator files, you can even insert things like Word documents um, but it has to be in a frame. So you turn this frame tool on and you go and draw a box. And now I have a frame that I can place stuff into. I mean, you can just use it as a shape if you want. If you want to go and give it a fill and a stroke or whatever, just to make it look all nifty, you can do that. No problem. That'll work. But if you want to put a picture in there or something else, you have to place it. So you have to go to File and Place. Very, very, very important. Or Control D. So I want to get, first of all, I want to get a picture off the internet to put in here. So I'm going to go to Unsplash. If you're looking for pictures, I always recommend Unsplash. If you're looking for little uh, icons, I always recommend the Noun Project. Highly recommend both of those. 
Um, if you're Googling crap, just make sure you're looking for high quality stuff. If you use low quality images and they look terrible, you will lose marks. Absolutely. So let's say I want a guitar here because that's all I think about. So anyways, I'll type in guitar. I'll go find a photo. I don't know about the Telecaster with the whammy bar. It just doesn't, it doesn't seem logical to me. Uh, okay, I'll just use this one right here. So I will download that photo. When you want to download a photo, there's a little arrow right on it. That's the easiest way to get the highest quality one. Click that. Now I'm in Firefox, so it's asking me where I want to save. You guys will be using something else. I really, really, really recommend when you're working in InDesign to put all of your pictures and all the stuff you're going to insert into a folder in OneDrive. So don't just leave it in your downloads because if you switch computers or you try to hand it in and the stuff is in your downloads, I might not get it. You won't be able to have access to your pictures uh, at home or on a different computer. So I went into my graphic tech folder and I created a poster pics folder. Okay, and I, I've already tried this, so it's already there, but I'll just uh, replace that one again and uh, there we go. So I've got my picture in a folder in OneDrive and I already made sure that OneDrive was running. So hey, good for me. So I'll go back here and I'll use my selection tool. I'll click that and if I want to put something in there, file and place or control D, then I'll go and look in that poster pics folder in my OneDrive, right down there, poster pics, right there, and I will open it and it'll go into this frame. Now, if you remember that photo, it's a tall one. Here, you can see the whole headstock and everything. But if I go back over here, it doesn't fit. It's cutting off the top of the guitar. Now, in this case, I don't really care. But in some cases, you don't want it to cut things off, right? So this frame, you could either expand the frame to make it as big as you want, but that's taken up a lot of my page now. I'm gonna undo that. I only want my frame to be this big. I don't want it to be that big. So the cool thing here is that the picture inside of the frame is separate from the frame. So I can double click here or there's like a little donut in the middle. And now I can move the picture around in the frame and I can make it smaller to fit better in the frame. Or I can use these fitting options up here or on my properties panel over here to fit stuff into the frame. The ones I use the most are these first two. If you want to play around with the other ones, hey, go ahead, have fun. Um, so the first one is I will fill the frame proportionally. So I'll make sure the, the entire frame is filled, but it might cut off part of my picture. The other one is I want to see the whole picture, but it might not fill my entire frame. So you can see how that works there. The other thing I always recommend turning on is auto fit here. And auto fit just means that if I go and resize this frame, it's going to resize the inside with it. If that's not on and I resize my frame, my picture stays the same size. Pretty weird, huh? But again, I can always click on the inside and adjust it or whatever. But yeah, that's the real quick and dirty basics. You got your layers, you got, uh, you don't need pages for this, but the the thing is, when I place in something, it has a little link there. And again, this does not embed this file into this InDesign file. It just makes a link to it. So if you see, I have my links panel here. I have that guitar linked, and it's on page one. Now, if for some reason I go and do a crazy thing, like delete this photo, or I'll just move it out for a second it's gone. Now all of a sudden InDesign can't find that file. It's missing. The link is broken. Okay. And that's kind of a bad thing because now I can't really work with this properly. I can't really see it properly. It's just missing this photo. I can always double click this and go find it again. That's not it, but you know what I mean? You know, you know, it's that one. I can relink it, but, uh, Again, if you have all of your stuff in one folder in OneDrive and you don't move it, 
uh, then you don't have that problem. The only other thing that I'll show you really quickly is if you link things in here, when you go to hand it in, you can't just hand in the InDesign file because I won't get this picture with it. To hand it in, you need to go to File and Package. And what Package does is it takes all of the pieces of my document, it puts it in one folder. So now you just want to make sure there's no links missing, right? So I've found my link. Uh, this is just telling me that it's using RGB color space, which we haven't talked about, don't care about right now. I'll just package that. It'll say save it first. And then I'll go and create a folder. If you're done, then you go and find your hand in folder and you stick it in there, your whole package. Okay. So that's the way to hand it in. That's how to use InDesign. Now, go have fun.